Okay, this video will be a second look at the game 1812, the campaign of Napoleon in Russia. And uh, I already did a video on this three years ago, and I did a review of the uh, hex grid version, which is the one we're looking at now, and the area version. And uh, it's winter up here in Canada, there's lots of snow, we've got freezing rain today. This always gets me in the mood to play a Napoleonic game especially these ones that take place in the winter, like 1812 or uh, Eilau. And as I was setting it up and learning the rules again, um, I realized I did something very wrong in the video three years ago. I was quite surprised that I missed it. So this is kind of uh, another look at the game to just correct some errors I made uh, in the video three years ago. I won't go through a whole playthrough, and I won't... Uh, well, I'll try not to repeat the stuff I said in the other videos, but let's take a look at this um, fascinating 1812 game, and it is still, for me, my favorite game on the Napoleonic Wars, especially the campaign in uh, Russia. Let's take a closer look. Okay, so what rule was I doing wrong? Well, let's go back in time a little bit. We're back in the year 1972, and the rules pamphlets, not really booklets, for the game 1812 were this kind of folder type arrangement. They were complete, they were easy to read, but they were a little awkward, being just a big pamphlet. Only a few things were emphasized, like the uh, section titles of the rules. And I missed a very critical rule in the stacking. And I'll show you that. Now what I did was I made a copy of the rules and uh, I highlighted and underlined in red so I won't miss this again. What was that rule? Okay, to clarify, I'm talking about the Grand Tactical Hex Grid version of the game. And here's the rule that I missed. Now it's easy when you highlight it and underline it. And this one was rather innocent. It just said stacking. A combat unit leaving a hex containing other friendly combat units must expend one additional movement point. Fair enough, I had remembered that, no problem. But here's the one that I missed, and this one is critical. Rule J. Combat units may only finish a friendly movement phase stacked on the same hex if they are all involved in an attack. Units may never stack except to attack, and a stack must attack on a friendly combat phase. That I knew, but I didn't know that you couldn't stack unless you were attacking. And that changed the game considerably. And I'll give you a few examples to show you why, especially in the critical opening setup here, where Napoleon's Grand Army is concentrated in Poland, and Kutuzov's, or rather Barclay's army, is spread out all through the province there of Vilna. Let's take a look at that. Now in the video I did some years ago, you may remember for those of you who saw it, um, the Russians moved first. So you've got Barkley here with a corps, Moradovich with a corps, and some cavalry, Constantine. And since they move first, generally the Russians fall back before the might of Napoleon's Grand Army. Napoleon does start the game stacked, that's technically illegal by the rules, but the setup is always different. So what usually happens, and I showed that in the video, is Barclay falls back something like this. One, two, three, four, five. And crosses into Zvir. This unit at Smartgoni can move up to guard the flanks. Constantine can fall back. And up here, Milradovich can fall back and make some kind of strategic line across the province. Now, with that little subtle roll of units having to pay one unit to unstack, Napoleon can't get quite as far as um, I thought. Now, you should have the supply units move last, but it would be something like this. Two, well, there's a stack there, so you want to move these guys in the front, even here. You can see you got a bit of a traffic jam, which is very Napoleonic. So by having the movement penalty for unstacking and 
stacking only for combat, it does replicate the movement of Napoleonic armies very well. So let's do a typical French move. So two, three, four, five, six. There's the advance. This guy is now alone. He can go six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you get this kind of spreading out a little bit. We'll divide the leadership there. No, that guy's one square back because there's another core there. He can go six. One, two, three, four, five, say six. Now all these guys here, they'd be two, three, four, five, six. He'd be two, three, four, five. He'd be two, three, four, five. And we still have three. Yep, two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five. And he could have five. One, two, three, four, five. And then you'd put your leadership with each core. Now, and of course, these guys are supply. One, two, three. And he'd be alone. One, two, three. So you can see. The armies are much more spread out that way. And um, I was stacking them, which you are not allowed to do. So that changes the game considerably. Since the units will be more spread out, they could be in more provinces, and the attrition on each of the provinces will be, uh, will be less. So for those of you who have the game, you were probably playing it correctly anyway. I just missed it that time. I'm just trying to think back now. Was I playing this correctly in 1972? I sure hope I was, but that's so long ago to tell you the truth. I just don't remember. So let's give you a simple example of where units could stack. Let's say this was the end of the Russian turn and the French are now going to move. So they could move this core like this. One, two, three, four. This core could go one, two, three, four. And that core could go one, two, three. Napoleon would be in command. So there's a case where you would attack and we'd have three French Corps versus one uh, Russian Corps, equivalent of a three to one. So um, that's the error I made in the last game I played. And apologies for that. I can't seem to remember every single turn, especially with games that are like 30 years old. But um, just wanted to get that thing straightened up. I don't know whether I should pull the other video or not. The other video is still pretty good for showing you some of the moves. Uh, I just feel a little guilty when you're playing the game wrong and it's on video. I don't know whether I should pull that video or not. Anyway, that's it for uh, 1812, the campaign of Napoleon in Russia. If you want to see a little bit more about how the game works, you can see the other video on the subject. And the area version is also quite good. Like I said, this game is my favorite game on Napoleon in Russia. Thank you for watching.